Hey everyone, it's Jody here, your Wednesday host for FT Realm, and I hope everyone's having a good week. I'm having a good week. Today has been crazy. Um, I had, I went to a high school in town to talk about um, pronouns and any other questions that these um, high school students in their in the GSA had. It was really awesome, and I'm gonna make a personal video about it tomorrow. So check out my personal channel sometime tomorrow, and it'll be there. But I'm gonna jump into this week's topic because I feel it could get kind of long since I tend to be a talker, and I'm really trying to work on cutting stuff down for you guys, because shorter the better, right? And so, this week's topic is trans people in the military and trans people that are, like, athletes in any at any level. Excuse me. And so, for those that haven't seen any of my other videos um, about me talking about my military experience or my military background, um, I was in the military for a total of six years. I was in active duty for four and a half years, from 2005 until 2009, I signed my contract in, at the end of 2004, but I didn't leave for basic training until February of 2005. Um, and then I got out of active duty June, end of June 2009, and I was in the reserves from the beginning of July 2009 through April of 2011, a year and a half later, something like that. Yeah, seems about right. And so, um, during my time in the military, um, I had already known that I wanted to transition. I had already dis I had already embraced my trans identity, and I had made the conscious decision to actually postpone my transition because I wanted to serve in the military, and the don't ask, don't tell policy was still relevant at that time, since it didn't get removed until 2013, I do believe. And pretty much, the don't ask, don't tell policy, for those that don't know about it or haven't seen Spencer's video is you could be dishonorably discharged from the military, and at that point, it is pretty freaking serious um, on that level to be kicked out of the military, discharged from the military with a dishonorable discharge. And so, since the repeal, um, people that were discharged underneath the don't ask, don't tell policy, they had the opportunity to repeal it and change it over to an honorable discharge, and actually had the opportunity to re-enlist if they so desired to. So, that background there. Um... Most of my military career, I spent not talking about my trans identity. I didn't talk about my sexuality in any capacity. Um, while I was in basic training in AIT, I didn't give a shit at all. Um, I did have a battle buddy that was very open about her lesbian identity and almost got the both of us kicked out. And so I was freaking out. I was like, my life is over. I gave up my scholarship, my softball scholarship, to be in the military Oh my god, what the hell is going to happen? My life is going to be ruined. Like, I was literally having a panic attack. And so, obviously, um, the findings were false on some accusations that had occurred around this, um, around her lesbian identity being brought known to the drill sergeants, but there was a full-blown investigation, and I was literally tweaking out, and I, at that point, I stopped talk. We ended up having to switch up battle buddies. I couldn't be with her, couldn't be her battle anymore. I got a new one, and I just didn't talk to anybody anymore. I was like, Zipped it. I didn't even care. The only people I would talk to is a lot. It was my family, my friends back home when I would call them on the weekend, like once a week, and my drill sergeants. If they asked me something, they were the only ones I talked to. I was so scared. Um, and that was kind of how my military career was. Um, once I got out of training, I got stationed in Hawaii, and I had a really close, tight-knit group of friends. There was about maybe... Six of a, six people that I really hung out with, and I kind of put them through a test to see if it was okay that I would could tell them because it was really hard keeping this a secret from people when I was just like bursting and dying inside on trying to live two separate lives. Like I didn't want to be around my friends because they didn't know, and but then I couldn't really go anywhere by myself because then it was just really boring, and so I kind of roundaboutly started asking about the LGBTQ community and then started getting them to go to gay bars and everyone was really cool with it and so at that time I did divulge my trans identity um, to a few individuals but it was people that I really really trusted and that I knew weren't going to say anything at all to anybody but it was really hard because I was literally putting my career in these people's hands and so it was really scary Obviously, nothing happened. They accepted me for who I was. They were really open and receptive about it. And it was just kind of what it was. So that was pretty cool. And once I had 
I got out of active duty because, one, I didn't get promoted like I wanted to, and I wanted to go back to school. I was ready. I had actually, as I said, declined a second softball scholarship to actually join the military, and so I was just ready to go back to school. I was ready to start living my life. I was ready to transition four and a half years later, and so um, I got out. I joined the, milit the Army Reserves here in my hometown that I live in, that I go to school at, um, currently, the university here in my hometown, and I um, started taking hormones um, a couple, a few years later, and I was trying to really get acclimated back into my civilian life, and that was really difficult to do, and there wasn't a lot of resources, and so I kind of just got complacent and stagnant and unhappy where I was at, because I really thought that I was going to have to wait to move. Like, I was literally contemplating transferring to a bigger city so I could transition earlier and one of my friends literally sat me down and we had this amazing heart to heart where she just said you're not happy you need to start pushing forward to really find out if there's resources because you just don't know until you until you try and you look into it and I was really glad about that and the first panel I did when I was pre-t actually really got me connected with everyone to start my transition and so it was amazing and I was at the point where I was really discouraged at that time as well, and so it just fell into place after that hard to hard conversation. I appreciate my friend Becca so much for that conversation and telling me to kind of kicking me in the ass and getting me getting me going again because I really needed that push and that support. And so, being a trans athlete um, at the time, I knew that I was different. Um, I just didn't have the language there to when I had actually accepted my softball scholarship in Oregon at a community college in Oregon. And so I was just kind of like, this is who I am. I don't really know what my sexuality is. I don't really know my identity, but I was doing all these things. And you can check out some more stuff on my history, on my personal channel, what I did in high school and navigated that type of situation. And so um, I actually came out as a lesbian to make my teammates more comfortable. And I was uncomfortable because I was like, I don't, I don't identify as this, but I made people happy because people were like freaking out because I was really boyish. And it was a really big deal to them. And then later, I um, came out as bisexual um, because I did kind of still have an attraction to, men, to certain men. And then I ended up meeting in Oregon the first trans woman. And that was really kind of what got me researching being trans and really getting interested in this discovering of myself and knowing that this is where I was. It was kind of like that light bulb moment. But it was, like, not at the same time. It was, like, this is where I fit in. Like, this is who I am. This is my community. This is where I belong. I can be this guy that I've always envisioned I was going to be throughout my entire life. And so that was kind of how that developed. Um, and as I said, I played softball for two years. I wanted to go on, but then I had actually changed my major six times in two years. And so I decided I needed a break from school. And so I declined a t another two-year scholarship to a school to a university in Oskaloosa, Iowa, and I joined the military at that time because I felt like that was gonna. I wanted to travel and get some experience underneath my belt in life to really figure out what was gonna make me tick. And I did just that, and um, and I also turned down a soccer scholarship at the university I was at as at the two-year school I was at as well. And so I'm really happy to see that. Currently, we have trans people in the military standing up for what they believe in and being able to show people in the military that trans individuals don't have a mental illness, they're not a disease, they're not crazy, and that they can function as normal people, that they're just normal people and they want to serve their country, they want to do normal things, they have goals and expectations for their lives just like everybody else. And I appreciate all of them, and I really wish this could have come about a really long time ago, but unfortunately it didn't. It happens when it happens. And there are currently trans coll collegiate athletes at a couple of Ivy League schools. The one that's really coming to mind right now is the swimmer um, that that is at Harvard. And I do believe that, from what I remember, this was a couple of years ago, I think, when this article came out about how they had to start transitioning and they had to have their gender marker changed or in the process of being changed in order to switch swim teams from the women's to the men's. And then there was also a trans woman that was playing basketball or something and then switched to volleyball, something like that. And that was a couple of years ago as well. And I can't remember where, and I can't remember those individual names, but if you Google it, um, 
it'll come right up. And so I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I will see you guys next week. Peace.